Warning, this show may contain content that may be harmful to younger viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey guys, what's bopping everyone? So, I was just chilling on my good old couch watching the good old Buffalo Bills on my TV. Then we went to a commercial, great, uh, commercial break and my dad turned his head and he, he asked me to watch this new show called Hit Monkey. Now, I nor normally he doesn't ask me to do this kind of stuff, like watch shows. Like, he doesn't give me very many recommendations, so I was like, Yes, boss! Decided to do a speed run right onto Hulu and found this Marvel show about a monkey with a Glock. Oh, this! This is beautiful! So I thought about how I've been doing a lot of reviews lately, and uh, I thought, eh, hey, one more I couldn't hurt. So I started out doing, so this is what I'm doing now. Go back to my roots. Before we start, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button down below. Also, hit the like button because it, uh, you know, it helps out with the algorithm. I would really appreciate it. With that out of the way, let's talk about monkeys. Monkey. Why? Monkey. I really like the art direction they took with this. And it really matches the animation so well. It really gives off this super comic book feel while also staying true to Japan origin. I know manga exists, but it looks more like American comic book style, in my opinion. I already see your comment. Sit down and listen before I finish next time, capiche? It has this old vintage look while also looking modern, and I think that's really neat. The animation takes a bit of getting used to because it's kind of sluggish at first, but it gets better as the show progresses. It actually really reminds me of a cowboy bebop in that way, and also in the music too. I will say, Hit Monkey got a banger of a soundtrack over here. This is what me and the boys turn up to when we go on car rides. It fits every mood perfectly and does what it's supposed to, and I can respect that anytime. It especially hits hard in some of the more somber moments in the show, in which uh, there are a lot of them, Hitmonkey can be super tragic at points, bro. It's crazy. Especially about like this silly of a concept, it can be sad and depressing, bro. The action of this show is also off the chain. Everything is so fast paced and it's entertaining watching a little monkey just totally end a man's career. The humor also bounces well off of this stuff. Ted Lasso did a pretty good job doing his best impression of Ryan Reynolds, and it definitely works here. It's pretty refreshing to Marvel. Well, the Disney side of it anyways. So now, let's talk about the real stars, and that is the characters. So, before I go into the full story, I just want to summarize each character and their arcs throughout the show real fast. So, Bryce is a pro hitman that is hired by a mystery man to kill the lead candidate in the Tokyo Prime Minister race uh, and does so but gets tracked down by the people who hired him gets double crossed and he gets gunned down along with a tribe of Japanese macaques that tried to nurse him back to health after being sh shot in the, in the ribcage pre uh, previously. Everyone dies except for this oddball monkey with anger issues. He guns them all down, all the bad guys down and Bryce gives him his glasses and tells him to finish the job. Becoming the killer of killers, or more or more well known to Japan, Hit Monkey. <laughs> Next is a buddy cop duo. One being old one being an older fellow who has given up on the world and a newcomer who is way more and is way more optimistic than she should be, which is totally a 100% an original idea that we haven't covered on this channel before. We have a monk who can speak monkey, which is kind of funny. There is a Shoji who has taken Ken's place, you know, the guy who died earlier. His niece, a Akiko, which is uh, the other main character from the human's perspective. She starts taking care of Hitmonkey once he saves her uh, from a different Hitman guy that's unnamed, I don't, or maybe he was and I just don't remember. Last but not least is the gender change of Bullseye who now goes by Lady Bullseye. There's actually a lot of Daredevil connections here, so I'm hoping he gets like a cameo, just like my boy the Mets fan. Mets, baby, love the Mets. All right, baby, let's go get a home run, baby. Love the Mets. Let's go Mets. Normally, I don't like gender swap or race swap characters because then you just end up with like, if you don't like the character, then that automatically makes you sexist or racist, like Amber. It, like that, it reminds me so much of it. But I actually thought the story benefited from it and it actually, you know, worked out. <laughs> uh, 
It's a good gender change. I like this one. It's a good one. Uh, apparently, her and Bryce knew each other uh, when he tried to hit on her during a during a during an assignment. Uh, like I don't know. They said like ten years ago. I feel like that kind of she there was pretty funny. I feel like episodes two through nine are really t is really top notch stuff. I mean. It covers some really serious topics and has some great action, has some funny moments, you know, it's got everything that I want. Like the one-off joke about Bryce and his dad, we got a whole backstory about that like a few episodes later. It to- like, it really pays off for you to pay attention to this show and to pay attention to everything that I said because it really comes back and with a satisfying payoff. Now notice how I said the ninth episode. Yep, you know I'm all about the bad finales, baby! When I said I'm going back to my roots for this one, I was not kidding! Which was totally disappointing because it was completely set up, like, perfectly in the first part of finale and could have been so much better. Okay, the first problem. I don't know if I like Shoji as a twist villain. It just seems a little too easy. I actually feel like it would have been much harder of a twist if it was Akiko as the twist villain instead. It would have been like a much more impactful punch, but I'll let this one slide because I will admit I didn't really see this one coming. I know I should have and I'm a little bit butthurt about it, but it's fine. The second problem is that there's no point to him being here other than for someone for you, uh, for someone for Yuki to fight and uh, eat up watch time. But maybe, maybe I'll give this another pass because it was still a, a, a cool fight scene though. Know. But the next thing, I don't know if I can forgive, man. I am so sick of storylines of the hero being hated by loved ones by doing the right thing. It is so infuriating. It's never a good storyline. It never works out in the end. It's just dumb. Hopefully Hitmonkey will figure out a way to make it better. But in the past, it just hasn't worked out. I hated it when they did it in Gotham, and I still hate it now. Akiko, my man. My main man. Your uncle just admitted to murder and called all of your friends losers and weak, but yet you still believe the other candidate guy is the bad guy. Are you serious right now? The man was about to point blank shoot you in the face until this monkey saved your life. And you're like, Whoa, you what? Oh, the logical thing, of course, you know, uh, Swear to kill the person who just saved your life by becoming the woman who literally just tried killing you on three different occasions not even 24 hours later. You actual idiot. Are you kidding me? Are you out of your mind? This just leaves such a bad, horrible taste in my mouth. It's the most upset I've been at a character probably since Amber. I'm gonna be real. Uh, no, actually, that's too harsh. Maybe, maybe since I've seen this beta, beta male and Demon Slayer, which I'm watching currently. I don't know if I'm gonna do a review for it right now, but I'm watching it. Another thing to add on to this whole goal of the season is that like to kill the person who hired Bryce and help Bryce ascend into the afterlife, which they both do, which is what I originally thought because you know, it ends with Monkey alone sitting in a room as he reflects on all of his mistakes throughout the series and maybe he might become a better person and he just has to do it all by him. You have got to be kidding me. This season is for nothing. It's it's for nothing. It would have been a much better ending to have the season end this way because it wraps up the character arc of uh, both Monkey and Bryce. You know, Bryce moving on to the afterlife and Monkey uh, not being able to fit in with the humans or the monkeys, just like that one elder ghost monkey said. But I guess it's all right because uh, everyone leaves Monkey and he's the only one, he's the only person who chooses to stick around and oh dang it, it makes me sad anyway. And yeah, that's about all I gotta say about it. It's a solid all around show and I hope it gets cleared for a second season. If you haven't already checked it out, I would highly suggest doing so. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's way better than I think it should have been. Make sure you leave a comment talking about if you like the series or not. And you also agree that the silliness of this show is refreshing to the Marvel formula. That's all I have for today, friends. Until next time!